Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this support. We honestly have the most incredible audience at this Women's Summit. We're so happy to have you. And, and uh, you really have been inspiring all of us for the past couple of days. And now Natasha is going to continue with this pattern. Natasha represents Shahed. Shahed is a massive streaming platform. For those of you who don't know, it competes with Netflix, with Disney+. Plus. But Shahed is seeing exponential growth, and Natasha and her team are at the helm of this. So, Natasha, I would like to know about Shahed's position in the market right now, considering the competition that you're seeing from other streaming platforms. Sure, thank you so much. And first of all, at the risk of sounding repetitive, thank you so much, Forbes. Thank you, Her Royal Highness, Princess Noura. Thank you, Ramia, for your time. And of course, all of you, it's such a privilege to be here today. Um, so, Shahed, we are the number one streamer in the MENA region, which is something that we're incredibly proud of. Um, and just to give you a bit of context, I'm sure, and I hope that a lot of you use our, our app, um, but I'll explain briefly the three services that we offer. So, we have an AVOD side to our platform, so simply that, um, it, that's abbreviated, it means advertising based video on demand. And what that is, is basically when you come onto the app or to the website, you can watch content for free with some ads on it. And we this year relaunched that side of, um, of our platform and we've got 86% of our titles available for free to everyone to come and watch on the app. Um, then we've got a paid side to our platform. A lot of you will hopefully um, know that as Shahed VIP. Um, and that's a subscription-based um, uh, service and you have access to the same great content. In addition to that, there's the Shahed Originals, Exclusives, our great sports offering, and also our kids offering. And then lastly, on top of that, um, Shahed, we're very proud of the fact that we were the first streamer in the region to launch FAST. Um, FAST channels uh, stands uh, for Free Advertising Supported Streaming TV. Um, and that's basically digital channels available um, on our platform. So you can imagine Tash Matash. You can come on anytime onto the platform and watch every, you know, all the episodes of Tash Matash at your own leisure um, with some ads on it. So those are the three services that we offer. Um, we operate in a very uh, competitive environment, as you've mentioned. Um, you know, when we say that we're the number one streamer in the region, we don't say that lightly. We are very proud of that, but it does come with a very strong responsibility. Um, as the local player, we take it very seriously um, upon us to make sure that, you know, we are the streamer that understands the local stories, and it's our responsibility to tell those local stories in an authentic manner to our local audiences. And so we are constantly innovating and trying to improve the experience to make sure that we are ahead of the game. And do you think that this is one of the ways in which you're staying ahead of the game, understanding local culture and perhaps catering to your audiences here very efficiently? Absolutely. So obviously we are part of the NBC group, which has been in the region for over 30 years. You know, they're masters in terms of content and being able to tell um, local authentic stories. And so we benefit from that. Um, and we are in a, we're in a very interesting space because we have the responsibility of migrating a lot of the audiences onto the digital um, platform, but also of talking to the young audiences and particularly in the kingdom here where um, a vast majority of the audiences are of the younger age they do have uh, an affinity towards you know international brands so it's a big responsibility upon us to make sure that we are catering for their needs and bringing them onto our platform as well so you are a female leader leading a very important team at Shahed. Mm. How would you say that the traits that are traditionally perceived as female are actually helping you to guide your team and to achieve the numbers that you are seeking out at the end of each quarter, at the end of each financial year? That's a great question. Um, I think that there's um, some, th uh, some merit towards the thinking around having different leaders for different stages of growth in a company. And to give you context, you know, Shahid, about two, three years ago, was pretty much a small, much smaller team, very much operating in a startup kind of environment. And now we've become a very big business and we have a lot of customers and of course we also have quite a bit of complexity. Um, so I think that within that understanding, there's a lot of traits that, and I'm gonna be stereotypical here, but there's a lot of traits that female leaders um, carry which, which kind of help in those environments. So, so to use myself as an example, um, 
I've built a very diverse team around me. Um, so, so they really challenge me. I mean, I could have made my life easier, but they do challenge me quite a lot. And the reason I've done that is because it's important for me to have a lot of diverse opinions. And so I think female leaders tend to be very consultative in their decision making. So I apply that a lot with my team, make sure that I'm listening to different perspectives and, and trying to make the best decisions possible. Um, so that's a, a very strong trait. Um, the other one I would say, which is important for Shahid at the moment, is having the ability to be collaborative and drive a lot of alignments. Um, it's very easy for um, you know, diverse teams to try and kind of do a million things at the same time. And so my job is to really you know, force that collaboration and that alignment, make sure that everyone's is sticking to the goal of what we're trying to collectively achieve. Um, and then lastly, I think the, the component of empathy and leading with a lot of care. Um, I think I mean, uh, uh, male leaders have also started doing that quite a lot. I think it's, it's something that's probably a bit more innate to female leaders. Uh, and it's certainly needed in our environment. We work in a very pressured environment. And so I think the teams appreciate the fact that um, I do tend to lead with a lot of empathy and care towards them as well. And it sounds like, <laughs> sounds like you're leading with a lot of diplomacy as well, and it's a very democratic environment that you're running. I try. It's not always. <laughs> Shahid uh, previously worked at Google, at other big tech companies. Tell us about the experiences you had there and how these tech giants actually, the experiences that you had with these tech giants helped you shape who you are today and how you operate at Shahid. Um, so I, I was very fortunate to start my career in big tech, and so I got um, exposed to some pretty, uh, you know, incredible learnings at a younger age. Um, so at Google, uh, when I joined the company, it was still really quite a big company, but it, was, it still had um, this kind of startup innovation uh, vibe to it. It was very much part of its culture. Um, and I really had, um, you know, the pleasure of kind of earning my stripes there and thinking outside of the box. They really encouraged a lot of um, innovation and, you know, doing all sorts of side projects that could help the business grow. Um, and the main thing that I learned at Google, for example, was, um, you know, always having the customer or the user at the center of everything that you do. It's very much part of the ethos and it's something that always um, stayed with me. Um, and often in our discussions at Shahid, um, you know, we, we discussing like quite big problems and there's a lot of complexity. I'm generally the one in the room that says, guys, hold up. How is the customer going to experience this? How are they going to feel this? Is this going to make sense to them? So that's something that's always stayed with me. Um, and then at Microsoft, I had the privilege of uh, joining the company uh, prior to me being recruited. Satya Nadella, the CEO, he had joined the company a year prior to that. And so I got to witness and experience the, the huge shift that he's driven in that company and the learning that I really took from that is that um, cultural change is actually possible no matter how big you are. Um, Microsoft in those days, for example, um, had kind of, you know, in the, in the days of Steve Ballmer, the previous CEO, they were very competitive, very aggressive in their growth, uh, but their culture became quite toxic. So he served the purpose for the growth up to that point, but then they needed to shift. And Satya came in and really drove a lot of, you know, out, you know collaborative partnerships uh, and this whole uh, notion of growth mindset. And again, that's something that has really stayed with me. And so at Shahid, you know, um, we've, uh, in the last year, we've uh, grown in our partnership business by 3.5-fold. Uh, and that's, again, because I, you know, I, I do try and bring that through to the team and really focus on collaborative partnerships and really expanding the way that we perceive our industry. So those are two uh, big learnings that I, that I took from tech that have served me well today at Shahid. And do you feel that these types of uh, leadership traits that you have are ones that young women and girls should also adopt if they're aspiring to be in similar leadership type positions? I believe so. Um, I think that the, the, the future of kind of corporate in any case or streaming where I operate in um, does demand for a lot of, um, you know, empathy and collaborative thinking, a lot of alignment, open communication. Those are always core principles that I think we need to apply no matter where we are. At Shahid, you decide which audiences are going to drive growth. How do you choose those audiences and what can we look forward to seeing uh, come from Shahid? Um, so 
we've got an amazing um, lineup for the rest of the year. So we just finished our most successful Ramadan. Hopefully a lot of you did um, see some of our titles. I see you nodding your head. Um, uh, so we're very proud of that. And now for the rest of the year, we've got some um, great titles lined up. We've got a lovely family title called Sukkot, which is going to be coming out soon. And I really hope that um, the whole family gets to enjoy that. We've got some Shahid originals, um, some really controversial ones as well that I think oh. are going to um, going to appeal to a few audiences. So we've got that coming towards the end of the year. Um, we uh, have the Saudi Premier League starting the new season in August, and we've done a huge amount of work on the product so that um, you know, users subscribing to watch the, the sporting league on our platform are going to have a super rich user experience with a lot of data, and so we're quite proud of that. Um, and then we've also got some awesome kids titles that are going to be coming down the line. So continuing to cater to the Middle East market to secure your share among this tough competition. Great strategy. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.